Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? Me too, I'm feeling good. You feeling good? I'm feeling good.
Oh my goodness, you all. <laughs> I could feel I could the music, music all the way, all the way from, my from my home in South Minneapolis. <laughs> so let's hear it for our band. Thank you so much, so much Franco, Franco Holder, Holder, Bob Johnson, Ian, Ian Young, Ian McGraw, McGraw Thomas Hannah Patrick. Patrick. Absolutely, Absolutely amazing. amazing. It is it so, is so good, good to be together, to be together in all the ways, all the ways that, we that we can be. be. My name is Jen Crow. I'm one, I'm of, one your of your ministers here at here First Universalist. Universalist. And it is and an, an absolute, absolute joy, joy to be together, to be together in, in all of the, all ways, of the ways that we can, that we can be. be. Whether we're, Whether we're in, in first person, person or, over or over Zoom or joining, or joining throughout, throughout the, week, the week or over or YouTube, or YouTube, YouTube through our podcast, through our podcast we connect in community in so many ways. I'm joining you from home today thanks to the ongoing joys of COVID. And wherever we are, we are all a part of the community of First Universalist Church. We have been gathering together for over 160 years to proclaim the good news that each and every one of us is whole and holy and worthy, welcome and wanted exactly as we are. We gather to remember that we are part of an ever expanding circle of love and care and connection in the world and to be about the spiritual work of aligning our actions with our values so that we might bring our message of love and hope out into the world transforming this world into the beloved community of liberation and joy and belonging that we long for. This is who we are. This is the journey of faith that we invite you into when you journey with us in this church community. And together we practice some very specific spiritual practices to help us get there. We welcome, affirm, and protect the light in each and every human heart. We listen deeply for where love is calling us next. And we act with humility and courage and compassion in service to justice. We do all of this with a deep commitment to ending oppression in all of its forms and creating beloved community. Now, whether we are gathering in person or online, we take time to remember that we and to celebrate the fact that we actually live in body. So we encourage you throughout the service time today to tend to your body to get up and move around if you need to, to allow yourself to participate or respond with your body, with your voice if you want to, and especially for our young ones and their caregivers. We want you to know that you are welcome in this service and in the sanctuary, especially if you are wiggly or needing to make a little bit of noise. Everyone is welcome and wanted and worthy in this community. And for those who want it, there is childcare for nursery through preschoolers available for our families in the RE wing. Now, for folks who are gathering in person, we continue to take care of each other during these pandemic times by encouraging everybody who can to be vaccinated, by asking folks to stay home if they are feeling sick, or if, I don't know if someone in their family has COVID maybe, by masking when you're in the building, and by staying in your household groups, giving a little bit of distance from each other and asking for consent before you go in for a hug with each other. And just a reminder, we're singing together in the sanctuary with masks on, of course, but if you prefer to be in a space where there isn't singing happening, you can always head down to the watch the live stream down in the Cummins room, or like me, you can sing out loud as much as you want if you are at home. Now, today is a big day in the life of our church, and I'm so glad that you are here. This morning, we'll celebrate Flower Communion, a ritual that recognizes the diversity of our gifts and the grandeur of our collective beauty. This morning, we will also be saying goodbye to Julica Herman de la Fuente, who's there with you in the sanctuary. And she has been with us these last two years, supporting our journey of transformation and liberation. This morning, we also get to say hello to Reverend Kate Tucker, who I believe is also there in the sanctuary. Kate is our minister emerita, and she'll be joining us for the next 10 weeks, coordinating and leading worship over the summer so that your regular worship leaders can take some much needed time off. Kate, we're so glad you're back with us for the summer. Now, as you know, we're also really enjoying the musical gifts of our band this morning. So thanks again to Franco and Dean and Bob and Ian and Thomasina. We're so grateful you're here with us. Now, I can see you clapping. I love this. <laughs> After the service today, for those who are gathered in person, Please join the community outside under the tent in the parking lot for a picnic lunch. And then church members come on back to the sanctuary or join us online for our annual meeting at noon, where we will be tending to the business of our congregation. As we vote to call Reverend Arif Mamdani as our associate minister, 
yes, as we adopt the eighth principle, institutionalizing our commitment to anti-racism into our shared faith statements, as we approve our operating budget for the next fiscal year, elect our trustees and officers and foundation directors and nominating committee members, approve delegates to our general assembly, and approve changes to the bylaws of our church to expand participation in the foundation board to include our youth. We hope that you will be with us today at the annual meeting to be part of these historic decisions in the life of our church. Now, the fun doesn't stop after this week. Next week on Sunday, June 12th, we are gonna have a very special choir led Sunday service and Kate will be up leading with us. So please expect special music and poetry and performance from choir and orchestra. It's gonna be a wonderful day. There'll be no congregational singing next Sunday, but I promise that the power of the music and the poetry will transform us all. And then after the service next week, join us for our summer activities fair, where you'll find all kinds of opportunities to connect and get involved this summer. Whether you're looking to make connections with other congregants in small groups or wanting to volunteer in church or be active on our justice team, there will be folks there who would love to meet you, to answer your questions and have you on their team this summer. Please join us for all of these opportunities next Sunday. And now with all of this good news and all of this change, let's prepare our bodies for this time of worship together. I invite you to arrive in whatever way works for you. I am already putting my feet firmly on the floor and uh, benefiting from one of the things I have loved about uh, at-home worship, which is my bare feet on the floor. <laughs> I invite you to settle your body. Maybe you wanna stretch out your neck. Maybe you wanna move it from side to side. Maybe you wanna take a moment to notice the places where your body touches the earth or the pew or holds the hand of a beloved. Let's take a moment to settle our bodies, to prepare our spirits for this time together. And I invite us, as is our practice, to share in three on-purpose breaths. Breathing in and breathing out so, so slowly. Breathing in and breathing out. And once more at your own pace, breathing in and breathing out. from this space of connection across time and in place. We remember that we are but stewards of any place for a short time, that the place our congregation inhabits is on land that has been and continues to be home to indigenous peoples, and that this land holds and tells many stories, layer upon layer upon layer. In our time here, we receive the past with all of its promise and pain. And we take responsibility for healing what we can, shaping the present in the direction of joy and liberation now and for times we will never see. Come, let us worship together. I'm gonna uh, engage in a, I guess you could call it a transparent uh, worship moment here. Um, and I want to say uh, two things. First, um, if anyone would like a little bit more room around them, there's plenty of room up front on the side here. I see many of you sort of squished in in the back, so feel free to come all the way in, um, as well as there's lots of room up in the balcony. So just wanted to let you know that. I also wanted to check in with our um, uh, tech team uh, and ask if, uh, don't stress out about this, I know I'm throwing something at you. Um, so if it's not possible, we can just let it go. But uh, I wonder if we could get the um, live captioning up when we have Reverend Jen projected, just so that it's a little bit easier to take in what she's saying. 
Again, if it's not possible, don't stress about it. And with that, friends, let's settle in as we light our chalice. I invite you to join me in the words for lighting our chalice. Love is the spirit of this church, and service is its law. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. And now we're going to get some help from the choir in singing the garden song. Lyrics will be up on the, uh, up on the screens. Please stand as you are able. So this, oh, I forget to take off my mask. There we go. Thanks, tech team, for reminding me. So this morning, we say goodbye to Julika. We do that here in the sanctuary. We do that online. We do that if we're listening to the podcast or watching the recording later. This is a time where we pause to notice Julika leaving us. And we notice too that though she is leaving us, the seeds that Julika helped us plant and the sprouts that she encouraged in us, those are staying right here. We'll be reminded of Julika's green thumb often whenever we notice ourselves turning over the soil or fertilizing it to prepare it or planting those seeds of liberation and transformation in ways that she showed us to do. I have in my pocket a couple of seeds and I notice 
Ah, there's a pot here. So I think we should plant these as you go, Julica, because you can never have too much transformation. You can never have too much liberation. That's right. So in they go. And I have a question for you, congregation. What are some of the things that Julica brought? What are some of the things that Julica taught us to bring to water these seeds? Joy. You don't have any answers, I hear that. Okay, there's so many you brought to us. Joy, I heard. Compassion. Awareness. Centering BIPOC voices. Let's pour a lot of that in here. What is that? Radical optimism. Bravery. Truth telling. I'm running out of water here, and I see there are some more little watering cans up here on the front of the chancel, and I wonder if any of our kids will help, might come up and put some water from those watering cans in this pot with me. Would you do that? You need some volunteers. Actually, you know what? People of all ages. If Julica <laughs> taught you to bring something to this work of growing transformation and liberation, and you want to come up and grab one of these watering cans and put some of that water into this pot. Reverend Arif will help you. What are some of the things that we haven't said yet that Julica taught us? Courage, fun, I heard a child's voice say. Another world is possible. Pour it all in. Pour it all in there. There you go. What else did Julica bring? Say it loudly. Beauty, so much beauty. Love, storytelling, I'm going to say imagination. So much imagination. Anti-racism in the park. Creativity. A tree growing in our house, her house. And in your house, too. You planted a tree right in your office. It's still there. Wisdom. Take a couple of you in here at this once. Two or three. Pour it all in. Pour it all in. There we go. There you go. Look what's growing. Do you see those blossoms? I see them. So who among us, as Julica goes, who among us will continue watering these seeds? Say, I will. I will. We will. We will. Julica, will you stand and face these people who love you and have been changed by your ministry, please? Julica, you have been a patient and faithful and magical gardener for us. And we've been blessed to work beside you and to be mentored by you during these past two years. 
we carry you in our hearts. We carry the lessons that you taught us. And we will continue the work that you have been in with us. We will do this work together and with gratitude for you. And we know that you will be planting new seeds in new places. You will be encouraging sprouts in other people. And you will be calling people in to joyful communities of transformation and liberation. And we will be grateful that you did that here with us. We have been blessed by your presence. And we offer you our blessing on your work and your life as you leave us with our deepest gratitude. Thank you.
ourselves to. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. What a wonderful, wonderful world indeed. Yesterday, Yesterday marked the 99th anniversary, the 99th anniversary of this flower communion ritual that we are about to be part of. 99 years, it seems like a long time, right? And it is, I mean, it is a long time. But it's also not that far back in history, right? Both, both are true. This flower communion ritual is an important part of our Unitarian Universalist faith. And because we have our young ones with us this morning, I want to say a few words about why it matters and what it means. Reverend Norbert Chapek, a Unitarian minister in Czechoslovakia, created this ritual 99 years ago because I think he looked at the world around him and said, you know what, it's not so wonderful right now. He looked at the world around him 99 years ago and saw that the stories that people were telling were too small and getting smaller. Now, what do I mean by that? Looking back on it now, we know that he was ministering to a world on the eve of a great world war. It's hard to imagine now, maybe not so hard, but that was a war that swept up a large number of powerful countries in the world and it touched the lives of nearly everyone alive back then. And I think Reverend Chopik saw this coming. Maybe not the world war, but for sure the two small stories of domination and control, pointing fingers and blame, two small arguments about who could control the most land, the most oil, the most stuff. I think he saw this coming. I also think he knew that religion was a powerful force for shaping how people live their lives. That I think he saw, I think he knew that what we give our hearts to shapes what we do and how we are with each other in the world. And so Reverend Chopik developed a ritual that would help to protect people against these two small stories of domination and greed and control by connecting them with a bigger story about who they are, about who we are, and who we could be. We practice this ritual today in that same spirit, that we might learn to live inside a bigger story and do that together. And friends, that is what ritual does. Ritual wants us to live in a bigger story. It knows that left to ourselves, we might go for the ease of a small story, a simple story. And so ritual invites us to create a bit of a road bump to that story, right? Domination and control are small stories. They are awful stories, and they can hurt a lot of people very badly, but in the end, they are small stories. They are small stories that want to put this great big world into a lie. But the God that our ancestors knew 
which is to say the spirit of life and love that we know, the spirit that Chapek knew, that love just keeps calling us. That love just keeps calling us and saying that there is a bigger story here. It just keeps calling us and saying something else, something bigger is going on. This is the bigger story that our ritual points us to. This is the larger reality that no war machine could contain, not 99 years ago and not today. This is the journey of the heart that our flower communion invites us into. So I invite you to take a moment here in the sanctuary, online, if you're listening to this on the podcast, taking a walk, pause for a moment and look at the flower that you are holding, the flower that you brought. Yes, this is our get your flowers ready moment. (laughs) Take a look at that flower. Take a look at the flower that's near you. Bring an image of a flower into your mind and see yourself in that flower. Find yourself in that flower, your beauty ever unfolding. And now in just a moment, I'm going to invite you to come forward with your flower, to bring forth the beauty that you gathered up from wherever it was found to place it in a vase up here at the front of the chancel. Ushers are here to help you if you need assistance. If you are with us online, I invite you to meditate on and answer the question that is shared in the chat so that we can create a word cloud together. What beauty in you do you bring forth to give to this community? So now as Dean and the band play some music from Billy Strayhorn, I invite you to bring your flowers forward and place them in one of the vases along the front of the chancel.
Once the flowers were gathered, as they are here, Reverend Chapek would consecrate them with these words. So I invite you to allow his words to take us into this time of prayer and meditation. Infinite spirit of life, we ask thy blessing on these, thy messengers of fellowship and love. May they remind us, amid diversities of knowledge and of gifts, to be one in desire and affection and devotion to thy holy will. May they also remind us of the value of comradeship, of doing and sharing alike. May we cherish friendship as one of thy most precious gifts. May we not let awareness of another's talents discourage us or sully our relationship. But may we realize that whatever we can do, great or small, the efforts of all of us are needed to do thy work in this world. And with these words, with Reverend Chopik's words, let's rest in silence for just a moment, taking in this beauty that we have created together. Congregation, there is so much that we hold in our sanctuary today amid our diversities of knowledge and of gifts. And I invite you to speak aloud, to share in the chat online, or hold in silence all that you wish held in this circle of love and care this morning. And to these names, these concerns that you are sharing, I add that we hold Peter Elwell in our hearts as he and his family mourn the death of Peter's uncle, John Beecher, who passed earlier this year. John was a gentle spirit, and Peter has fond memories of sitting at his grandfather's dining room table playing board games with him for hours. May this and other memories be a blessing, and may they help to ease the grief that always accompanies loss. We hold John DeMars in our hearts as he and his family mourn the death of John's father, Joseph, who died May 26th in Battle Lake, Minnesota, after 99 years of a full and well-lived life. Joe began his career as a teacher and then became a psychologist. He nurtured and gave guidance to many young individuals with an open and liberal spirit. We hold John and Betty in our hearts as they mourn his loss, as well as all those whose lives Joseph touched. Our thoughts this morning are with Jesse and Amy Connors and their children, Maya, Ben, and Leo, on the death of Jesse's sister, Danny Toth, yesterday. Loving mother, friend, daughter, sister, and aunt, Danny's resilience and strength shifted cycles of hardship in her early life into a family filled with love and care. Our thoughts are with her, her children, and the whole family as they grieve. And we celebrate with Jeff Narr and Jessica Lyons and big sister Jules the birth of one more redeemer. Josephine Clare was born on May 26th. All are healthy and doing well. And holding all these things, congregation, will you pray with me? Spirit of life and love, awaken us to beauty. Lift our spirits and shake us loose from the small stories that nip at our heels and constrict our true voices. 
May every flower we encounter remind us that there's something else happening, something bigger, something grander, something we can only ever perceive just a fraction of. And in this humility, may we, may we realize that whatever we can do, great or small, the effort of all of us is needed to do thy work in this world. And with compassion, may we pray that the grip of addiction be loosened, that the weight of oppression be lightened, that truth be told, that joy break through, and that love make every suffering bearable for us all. May it be so. Amen. And please join in singing Spirit of Life. It is it's wonderful. wonderful. Oh, oh, I hear the, I echo, hear the again, echo again, but I know but I you know guys, you are, guys on are on it. <laughs> it is wonderful to be with you all in all the ways that we can today. To see those bouquets of flowers come together and the beautiful music and mixing of your voices. I feel like I can hear it at home and far away. So, I want to tell you that as we've prepared for this flower communion service and as we've prepared to say goodbye to Julika this week, there is one poem that has been ringing in my heart and I want to share it with you. Now it's a poem that is often read at services of commitment or weddings and it's often, I think, maybe even mistaken as a way of seeing a relationship or experiencing a relationship between one or two or just a few people. And I want to challenge us as you hear this poem wash over you to imagine what it would be like if this intention actually stretched far beyond any one-to-one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one relationship and instead was meant for us all. So from E.E. E. Cummings. I carry your heart with me. I carry it in my heart. I am never without it. Anywhere I go, you go, my dear. And whatever is done by only me is your doing, my darling. I fear no fate, for you are my fate, my sweet. I want no world, for beautiful you are my world, my true. And it's you are whatever a moon has always meant. And whatever a sun will always sing is you. Here is the deepest secret nobody knows. Here is the root of the root and the bud of the bud and the sky of the sky of a tree called life, which grows higher than soul can hope or mind can hide. And this is the wonder that's keeping the stars apart. I carry your heart. I carry it in my heart. I carry your heart. I carry it in my heart. What would it mean? What would it feel like if we knew 
we carried each other's hearts in our hearts, if we knew our heart was carried in the heart of others, if we were connected so very deeply. In this life, there is so much that is changing, so much that is constantly changing. People, places, things that matter to us coming and going, new life emerging, the cycles of life, of giving, receiving, and growing always in motion. What if we trusted that even with change, change which is in fact the heart of life, we always carry each other's hearts. We carry them in our hearts. Our hearts are carried in each other's hearts. What if we trusted this? What if we lived like this? This morning, we let go of Julika and her ministry with us. We allow this change to unfold, but we know that even with change, we carry each other in our hearts. And we carry Julika in our hearts. We take up her work, which is our work, the work of transformation and liberation, the goal of community that is truly anti-oppressive in all of its forms so that everyone can experience a sense of belonging and joy and liberation. This is our shared work. We must allow our hearts to continue to be changed, to change each other. So this morning, we experience symbolically what it is to be changed by each other, to go ahead and bring the beauty we have to give forward, to join it in community, and then to allow it to be different, to take what we need from these gathered bouquets, from the gifts of our words, our experiences, the ways we have changed each other, to allow that giving and receiving that change to unfold, trusting that the love remains and that there is a future we continue to build, carrying each other's hearts. So for those of you who are present in the sanctuary, in just a moment, there'll be some music and an invitation that I am offering you to go forward again and to choose a flower and take it with you. In some ways, it is a dismantling of the beauty of the bouquets, but in other ways, it is how we carry each other with us, how we carry each other's hearts in our hearts. For those of you who are with us online, there'll be an opportunity to respond to a question. What beauty from this community are you carrying in your heart? Let us be about this ritual together, trusting in change, trusting that the only truth, or at least a very important one in life, is change. Let us go get our flowers. Let us offer to each other how we are receiving beauty from this community.
much beauty. <laughs> Every time that we gather in worship, we remind ourselves that we are always in this rhythm, always in this rhythm of giving and receiving and growing together. And one of the ways that we do this is by the sharing of our financial resources with each other and our larger community. We remember that there are times in our lives when we need to receive and to learn how to do that as a spiritual practice. There are times in our lives when we have things to give and we need to learn how to do that as a spiritual practice because together, always in the cycle of giving and receiving, I trust that together we always have enough. So this morning, our offering will go to support the ministries of our church here at First Universalist. This has been a big year. This has been a year when we have learned how to live into our multi-platform reality of worshiping in person and online. It's a year where we have returned to in-person religious education for our children and youth. It's a year when we have gotten to live into our newly renovated building and our space there at 3400 DuPont has returned to being a bustling center of activity, not just for ourselves, but for our entire community. We continue to grow into our anti-oppression commitments. We support a family living in sanctuary in our building. We do all of this with all kinds of challenges and changes that have come this year, the ups and downs of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. And we are approaching the end of our fiscal year and as we watch the numbers, we are anticipating a gap between our expenses and our income. This gap is about $40,000. And we are asking each of you to go ahead and make a commitment to fulfill the annual pledge that you made, if you can, before June 30th, and to make an additional gift, if you are able to do that today or any time in June, to fund the mission of our church. Let's do this together. You have taught me over and over that this is a place I can put my trust in, that this community will help us to continue to give and receive and grow to transform not just our hearts, but our larger world. So if you are able, please join me in making a gift today to help close this gap so that we might continue the important work of our church. Our offering will now be received.
I think that was our benediction. <laughs> Friends, as you go forth, as you go forth, greet each person. See in each person their flower, their beauty, their unfolding beauty. Care for it as if it is your own. And we will create in this world the beloved community that we dream of in our hearts. And as we, as we go, let's sing one more time together, Where You Go, I Will Go, Beloved. <laughs>